Last week we discussed the concepts of loops and how to use the do widget. As an example we took a scoreboard and looped through all of its values, creating a dynamic and adjustable loop inside of Minecraft. What if I told you there's an extra widget exactly for this purpose? Let's explore the for each widget in this last episode of Widget a Week. The idea is pretty simple. We do have a value inside of a scoreboard, for example 10. What this widget does is pretty similar to what I've done last week. But it is counting up instead and stops if the target value is reached. Therefore an internal scoreboard is created to hold the current state of the loop. So it counts from 0 to 1, 2 and so on up to 10. And for each time a set of widgets is executed that are specified by you. Let's try that out in code. So here we left last episode with this do until loop here. But this itself is pretty complicated. We had to repeat the scoreboard multiple times. So let's replace this whole thing here just with a for each widget. The for each widget just takes in one score as an argument. So let's do that score from selected uh, loop. And then it also says the parameter then is required like they do while widget. So let's insert then here. And this is not a simple widget or a list of widgets. This is a function that gives you a score. And the score is the temporary score that I talked about that is defined inside of this for each widget. By getting the score here, let's call it S, we can get access to the value of this counter score at each step in the loop. So when we use this error format here, we can also directly return something that should be in the tree. So for now, we just want to log this score here. So for each step in this loop, this log here is executed with the scoreboard here that comes from our for each. So let's see that in action. I generate it quickly. And here we have it, just reload. I set the value to 10 and now we can execute the function here and we can see it goes from 0 to 10, it logs every number like we specified. Of course just logging the numbers is pretty boring, you can also have conditions in here and to see which number is there. But let's look at the other arguments that the for each widget brings us. The from value is the lowest value. Like you could see in Minecraft, it started with zero, that's the default. You can also make it to start at one, then it would go one, two, three, four, and so on. And if you want to customize it even more, we can go from 20. And of course, this wouldn't do anything because uh, the scoreboard value is already reached. But we can also modify the step. And the step is how much you want to increase the value of this internal scoreboard each time. So let's set this to minus one, and then it would count down actually from 20 until it reaches this scoreboard here. And now we can see it counts down from 20 to 10 and using a step with minus one. And obviously for this temporary scoreboard, we also have an entity that's a fake entity with a fake player name. And it might come to conflicts if you're using multiple for each at once. So in that case, I would recommend to change this counter entity, for example, to entity not selected. But let's remove this step here again, because I would like to show you the last property, and that is translate. So if you paid close attention to the last video, I explained the concept a bit. We do have this execute if here that checks if this temporary scoreboard here is bigger or smaller, depending on what values you take. And then we execute this recursively. This translate is a thing to insert a position here. And that way we can translate the execution position of this function here in each step. Let me show you what I mean. Just lose location.relative and we set the x to 1. And then in the then argument we want to set a block block.stone and the location is just location.here. And now let's execute this function again. 
and we can see there is this row of stones here. Why is that? Well, we set our scoreboard to 10. So these are exactly 10 blocks here. And because for each execution, it goes one position into the positive X and it places the block here. Then again, the again, again, until the scoreboard is reached. And that is 10 times here. So in that way, you can fill areas and make actions on blocks and coordinates based on scoreboards. I could set this to 100 and it would fill 100 blocks here. And of course, this is just one dimension, but we could add into this then here another for each loop that would go into the Z direction and would fill a whole plane of blocks. And that's also kind of the core concept behind my word edit data packs, where I used this a lot. Well, and this was the last episode of Widget a Week. It was a pleasure to create 30 videos for you explaining the most fundamental widgets and tools in Object D. After 30 weeks and each week enriching the documentation up to a point where all of them combined are almost two hours long, it is over. I hope you learned something, although the interest seemed to become less over the time. Of course, the journey will not end here. There will still be videos about Object D. There will be new tools and new projects. But at this point, I am tired of creating these short-term projects and I want to release something more meaningful and enjoyable for you. I am going to discuss the future plans regarding this channel in a separate video soon. Until then, I wish you the best. Thank you so much for watching and being active, writing comments and contributing. Bye.